Hello and welcome to our next video about base elements. Yeah. This is the last, uh, one of the last base elements I would say. The rest are standard elements, but they are already combined. Yeah. The last base element I want to talk about right now is the so-called delay element first order. So this is a delay. Element first order or a so-called PT1 element. A PT1 element is an element with exactly one energy storage thing. Yeah? So this energy storage thing, there is something inside which needs some energy that the status of the element is changing. Yeah? We had such an example. Yeah? We did such an example earlier. Yeah? Remember, yeah, I will use the same example, yeah, almost the same. There was this cooling, the heat, the heat sink. Yeah. There was this heat sink. Yeah. And the heat sink was taking some power. Yeah. The heat sink has has an excessive temperature above the ambient temperature yeah? and we want to know how, if we introduce a certain amount of power, how hot will this be? Yeah? How much hotter than, than the exterior? Yeah? And in the example we said, okay, this is made of aluminium which has a heat storage capacity yeah, of, of 897 joule yeah, by kilogram and Kelvin. So this means if I want to heat this up, if I have one kilogram of aluminium and I want to heat this up by one Kelvin, I need 897 joule. Yeah. This is this warmth capacity. Yeah. And because of the form of the, we have a mass of the aluminium. See, this was 0 0.7 kilograms. Yeah? And we have a radiation resistance. This is this thermal resistance. And this, we say, is 1.5 Kelvin per watt. This means if we have 1 watt, if we have 1.5 Kelvin excessive temperature, we will radiate 1 watt away. And then we said, okay, we have power which is applied to it. Yeah. Then we have power which is radiated. Yeah. The radiation power. And the radiation power is the excessive temperature divided by this thermal resistance. Okay. And the difference of these two things yeah, is the total power. Yeah. This is the rest which will stay inside. This is the power we have to heat or cool the aluminium. Okay. If this is positive, we will heat it up. If it's negative, it's more radiated than brought in, then will, it will cool down. So this is essentially the power minus the radiated power, excessive temperature divided by the thermal resistance. Okay. To heat up the aluminium, yeah, I need an amount of energy yeah, to heat it up a certain delta temperature yeah, and multiplied by this capacity multiplied of course by the mass yeah that's it and this is the total power multiplied by the time it is applied okay and the delta of the overall temperature is of course nothing else than the delta of the excessive temperature so basically here stands delta 
excessive from t yeah multiplied because if the over temperature is changing then also the absolute temperature is changing yeah this means our total power is aluminium multiplied warmth capacity multiplied by the mass and then the change of the excessive temperature now I'm using this this is nothing more than PV minus excessive temperature from T RTH yeah. instead of delta I will use the differential equation now yeah. so this means PV from T equals yeah. this I bring to the other side excessive temperature divided by RTH yeah, plus C aluminium M aluminium multiplied by the change rate of the excessive temperature yeah. and now I want to get rid of this yeah. so basically there is written RTH multiplied by PV yeah, equals excessive temperature plus C aluminium M aluminium RTH yeah, and the change rate of the excessive temperature okay. now let's think again of this as an transfer function so here we have the transfer function okay there is the input xi there is the output xo the transfer function is of course the transfer function of a pt1 so here we have xi from t here we do have xo from t If we do the Laplace transformation, we have them from S yeah. and here of course we do have a certain transfer function yeah. and in our example yeah. in our example this is the input of course what I put in is this this is xi okay and this the excessive temperature is the result this is the output so here we have xo and here we have xo so basically what is written yeah, what is written is we do have a certain factor here k multiplied by xi from t then we have xo from t plus another certain factor yeah, which is can be different from this so i call it t yeah multiplied by the change rate okay this is the typical equation of a pt1 element this is how it looks like if we do the Laplace transformation we end up with k multiplied xi from s yeah, is xo from s plus t and now I also assume nothing changed before zero so I just use s multiplied by xo from s yeah. here I will extract XO yeah? so this is XO from S and then inside there's only one plus ST the rest yeah equals K multiplied by XI from S 
Now I just have to bring this to the other side and suddenly there is written x over s is k divided 1 plus st multiplied by xi from s. Okay. This is the transfer function, this is the function for the delay element first order pt1 element. Okay. Now, what is the transfer function g from s? Is of course this part here, k divided by 1 plus st. This means g from j omega equals k divided by 1 plus j omega t. Okay. Absolute value from j omega is absolute value from k divided by absolute value from 1 plus j omega t. And this is k divided by 1 squared plus omega t squared. Okay. And the argument from gj omega is, this is 0. The argument from k is 0, 0 degree minus, yeah, and arcus tangens, imaginary part, omega t, divided by real part, 1. Okay. Maybe we should look at this in our, in our diagram. We have here imaginary part. We do have a real part. Okay. Let's have a look on this k. Yeah, it's k. Here we add k. Okay. This part here is 1 yeah, plus j omega t. Yeah. So here's 1. Yeah. And here we do have omega t up here yeah? to get this angle here I have I have to take this divided by this and use the arcus tangents this is the reason here and to get the length here this squared plus this squared square root of it I will get the length of this the absolute value okay? should be clear okay? now if this is growing, if this is growing, it will grow up. If omega is zero, omega equals zero. What does it mean for? What does it mean for uh, our absolute value? Let's think about it. This omega is zero. We will here k divided by 1. Yeah. This means the absolute value will be k at zero frequency. At frequency unlimited, yeah, the absolute value will be, this will go up, 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 will get longer, 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 the absolute value will grow into infinity. Yeah. And k divided by infinity is zero. So at an unlimited frequency, we will be at zero. Okay. What does it mean for the argument? The argument at zero, this is zero minus zero is null. Yeah. K for j zero, we have zero degree. Yeah. And the argument from j unlimited, 
Yeah. What is this? Here we will grow. Yeah. Zero minus, let's say ninety, because if we are at the infinity, this will be ninety. Yeah. So we will get minus ninety degree. Okay. Good. We can now calculate these things. Okay. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at our body plot. Okay. Let's have a look at our body plot or on a step response. Right here, PT1 element. G from S equals K divided by 1 plus ST. Yeah. G from J omega is K divided by 1 plus J omega T. Okay. The absolute value, just have to copy it from here actually. Yeah. The absolute value is K divided by square root uh, 1 squared plus omega t squared okay and the argument is minus arcus tangens from omega t okay. with these formulas okay, i can calculate these things. Okay. Like said, let's have a thought again of the step response. Okay. Step response, here we are at zero. And here suddenly the frequency is unlimited. Yeah. At this point in time, frequency is unlimited. If frequency is unlimited, we will get zero out. So there will nothing much change. Yeah. At a long amount of time yeah we will be at k because then the frequency is zero we will reach k okay. so here let's say let's assume k is three yeah. this will be the value which we reach at some point in time If we are transferring this back into into time, yeah, we will realize that exactly after a time of t, yeah, time constant, this is this t here, time constant, we have reached around sixty three percent, and we're growing, and we're growing with each t, and at five t. We are finished. Yeah. At 3D we are almost finished. At 5D we are practically finished. And here this is the steepness at the beginning. Yeah. We will reach exactly the behavior we've learned in measurement. Yeah. This is the output. It will go up to if k is 3 to 3. Let's have a look at the body plot. Yeah. At frequency zero, yeah, we have zero. At frequency unlimited, we have minus 90. So we will start somewhere here yeah, and end up, end up somewhere here at minus 90 yeah, at very high frequencies. In between, there will something happen. Yeah. At frequency zero, we have k. In this case, I said k is three. One, two, three. We will start here. Here is k. And if we are going to infinity with the frequency, will reach zero. So up here we are very low. I can tell you, if you draw this, 
if you draw this and make dot by dot, you will reach the following following situation. If you calculate for every omega for 0 to 0 1, for 0 to 0 0 1, blah, 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 and so on, uh, if you calculate those things, you will get these curves. Yeah? There is a certain frequency. Yeah? There's a certain frequency, omega g, yeah? and this equals 1 divided by t. Yeah? What does it mean? What does it mean? Here we have t 10 seconds, so we have here this omega g. Yeah? 1 divided by t. Yeah? This is this line here. If I set this in here, yeah? here it's 1 plus, here is then also 1, so it's 2. Yeah? So the absolute value at this point is k divided by the square root of 2. So it will be somewhere here. And the argument from at this frequency omega g is this is 1, arcus tangens from 1 is 45, 40, 45 degree, it's minus 45 degree. So here we are at minus 45, here is minus 45. And this is exactly the characteristic frequency of our PT1. Exactly here we will start to drop, because then this is getting more and more important, more and more, more and more and more and more, and then if I have 10 times the frequency, then this one is not that important anymore. Okay? So if we have 10 times the frequency, we only have a tenth of the outcome. Yeah? Then this is rising. This is the factor which will count. Yeah? So we have it here. Yeah? We have it every time 10 times the frequency, we have only a tenth of the output. Yeah? So this will be the line here. So, how does it really look like? At the beginning, we are at k. Yeah? Then we will get to move away from this k. Here we hit exactly the point of dividing by square root of 2 and then we will slowly change into this linear line which is going down and here we again dropping with 10 times frequency only a tenth output. Yeah? Like, like the i element. Here it looks like the i element. Here it looks like the p element. Here it looks the, like the i element. And from the argument side, we will start somewhere here around zero, move down, hit exactly here minus 45 degree, and then we will end up, but never exceed 90 degree. This is what we have learned also in measurement. This is the math behind. So this is the transfer function which exactly shows this behavior. PT1 behavior, delay element first order. If something has one energy storage, one energy storage, like in our example here was the mass of the aluminium which stored heat energy. If we have this, then this will look like this. And the characteristic frequency, if we look at this, what is inside the T? Yeah? You see, inside the T there is the capacity of the aluminium, there is the mass of the aluminium, and there is the thermal resistance of the radiation. Yeah? This means the more mass or the more power needs to, to fill up this aluminium, the, more, the higher will this T be. Yeah, it's not that dynamic anymore. If this T is high, 
Yeah? Then this omega g is low and will drop. Yeah? So this means at a certain frequency we will get nothing out. Yeah? What what means nothing out? Means nothing out. Yeah? If I put in here energy, this will heat up, and if we take away this energy, this will cool down. Yeah? If I make it slow enough, then it will follow. Okay? This will heat up and cool down to full extent. Okay? If I'm making this too fast, yeah? if I'm just putting in on off, on off, on off, on off, this actually will not change at all. The temperature will stay constant. So this is saying that we are here somewhere and then it's only a very small ripple compared to which is go which is going inside yeah, what is going inside yeah, this is what this means okay and of course we have a certain delay it's clear because if i heat up this yeah, it takes a while until if i add power nothing will change yeah, and then it takes a while it heats up so it will be it will be later. This is why this is negative. The argument is negative. Okay. Pt1 element. This is transfer function. This is frequency response, step response. You can read the characteristic things out of this. Yeah. K forgot here to write K. Here at k. k is the stationary end value, you can read it out. t is the time constant, you can read it out. Also here, k is the value here, and t is hidden in this characteristic frequency. That's it. Okay. This was the last base element I want to talk about. Next time, next video, we're going to talk about a combined element. Okay. We're going to combine the D element with this PT1 element. Okay. This will be then next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.